Some of our earliest politicians believed democracies would work better without political parties at all. One of those politicians was Joseph Howe, the architect of responsible government in Nova Scotia. George Washington, the first president of the United States, thought so too. Both of these guys worried that political parties would cause division and conflict among groups, and that this could impede free thought and discussion on important issues. But politicians in both countries didn't take long to form political parties. In Canada, parties made sense for two reasons. They helped elected representatives choose the head of government, who was generally the leader of the winning party, and having a political party enabled the Prime Minister to rely on his party members' continued support for his agenda, rather than having to constantly fear losing their votes in the legislature. Essentially, political parties made it easier for governments to get things done. For you, the citizen, political parties are a vehicle by which you can channel your values and interests into the government's agenda. A political party is an organized group of people who have a shared set of values and understanding about what direction the country should be headed in. Just as it's your democratic right to vote and run in an election, it's also your right to join a political party. Some parties even allow you to join before you're 18 years old. In Canada, five major political parties have elected members of parliament. Canadians commonly associate each of the parties with certain values. We have the Liberal Party, the Conservative Party, the Green Party, the New Democratic Party, and the Bloc Québécois. The best way to learn about what a political party stands for is to pay attention to what it's doing. No matter which party you join, there's a similar process for citizens to influence where the party stands on key issues. At party conventions, party members get together to propose and vote on policy resolutions. The results of these votes give party leaders a sense of where their members stand on the issues. However, if an idea is accepted by members at the convention, the party leadership doesn't necessarily have to put it in their platform. If you really want a party to take an idea seriously, you can also support a candidate for party leader who is willing to stand behind that idea. The voting in most party leadership races in Canada is open to all members. In the last 10 years, all of Canada's political parties have had at least one leadership race. When a general election is called for the country, the leader works with advisors and senior members of the party, called the executive, to develop a platform. A platform is a list of commitments they intend to act on if they get elected. This platform is developed with a few things in mind. Proposals approved by the party's members, commitments made by the leader, and important issues on the minds of Canadians. If a political party is successful in an election, the leader of the party becomes the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister then chooses some of the elected members from the winning party to join cabinet and form a government. Each member of cabinet is put in charge of at least one government department. In a perfect world, members that supported the party and the leader will now begin to see their policies and ideas reflected in the work of their government. The party with the second highest number of elected MPs becomes the official opposition. Their formal title is Her Majesty's Loyal Opposition. The opposition party is responsible for examining and questioning the actions of the government in Parliament and holding them to account. Once elected, members of each political party in Canada almost always vote the same way on bills before Parliament, as directed by the party leadership. Now MPs are elected as a representative of their local constituents and under the banner of a political party, so MPs must balance the interests of the party with those of their constituents as well as their own conscience, something they themselves admit to be a challenge. In Canada's parliament, the parties usually win out. Our parliament has the strictest party discipline in the world. MPs are less likely to break ranks with their own party in Canada than in any other country. Some people say this is a good thing because it strengthens the party's image, but others, like one former Prime Minister, have admitted that it reduces the role of MPs to trained SEALs and nobodies. In actual fact, political parties aren't even a formal part of Canada's constitution. That is, 
They're not a part of a rulebook for being a government. Still, politicians have kept them around because, to a certain degree, they make voting easier for citizens, make it easier for leaders to govern, and help citizens and candidates organize around a common vision for the country based on how they see the world. That said, our country's record on party discipline is leading some people to wonder whether our extreme partisanship might also be preventing members of different parties from cooperating, even when this would be best for Canada. Got more questions? Ask us in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our previous videos.